Hello. In this video, we are going to look at node port service of Kubernetes. So the prerequisite for this video is some understanding of service, the default service type cluster IP, and some understanding of the deployment object. So we are going to create a deployment object for this exercise the manifest of which is going to be shown now. So this is the manifest of the deployment that we are going to create. And it is going to create three pod replicas as shown in the replicas section that I'm just highlighting here. And it is, used, it is going to use the HTTPD container, which is nothing but Apache. So let's go ahead and create this deployment. So the deployment is created. Let's see if the pods are showing up. Yeah, all the three Apache pods are running successfully. Now we need to go ahead and create a node port service. Let's look at the manifest that we have prepared for the node port. So we have got something like svc np train.yaml. And this is the manifest. I'll try to explain the manifest. So API version is nothing but the standard version, which is used for service, which is nothing but V1. And the kind is going to be service. Metadata will hold some information such as names and labels. Here we are only using name and we have given it SVC hyphen NP hyphen cube train. And as usual, we need to have a selector section under which we'll say the tag uh, this is nothing but a key value pair, which will match with that specified inside the pod template that we created a minute back. And we are going to call the container port from the service. The port, the service port is going to be 8080 and the target port is going to be 80, which is nothing but the container port inside the pod. And here, the, the main difference between a cluster IP service and a node port service is that we need to specify the type as node port. Let's go ahead and create the node port. SVC hyphen NP. Yeah, I'm going to give the file name and call the create command using it. Let's see if the service got created or not. Okay, so we could see a cluster IP for the SVC hyphen NP hyphen cube train service. And we also see something like 31468. We wouldn't have seen this port number when we created a cluster IP. So this is something new. So creating a node port service is also creating a cluster IP service automatically. And on top of that, it is creating a node port, which is nothing but 31468. So we have to note that the default range, the range for notebooks, notebook is going to be 30,000, 30,000 until 32767. And how this works is that when someone tries to access the notebook service, they are actually hitting one of the nodes on which the pod is launched. So in order for us to check the list of nodes on this cluster, we can use the command kubectl get nodes. We can also use get nodes hyphen o wide to see the list of IPs. It would show internal IPs and as well as external IPs. So we should be able to hit one of these internal IPs followed by the node port number to access the application. Now let's try to get into one of the pods. So we can use the first pod. So I'm going to use the kubectl exec command followed by hyphen it and then the pod's name, control C V. I'm just copying it here and I say bash. I'm getting into it. And here, if I have to use the curl utility, I have to install it. 
So I can say at update and then apt install curl hyphen y. So curl is installed here. We are inside the pod. Now, if we have to curl one of the node IPs, I forgot what the node IP is. So let me just exit out of it. Let's use the kubectl to get nodes hyphen o wide to see the list of IPs. And I'm going to copy one of the internal IPs. We can also copy the external IP for that matter. So I just copied the internal IP and I'm going to enter into the bash prompt of one of the pods. And from here, I'm going to curl the IP, the internal IP of the node, because we are using the node port service. We need to use the node IP followed by the node port number. And what was that number? So it was something like, I think, 31468. Uh, so we could check it again, not a problem. So cube cuttle get SVC is going to give the port number, which is nothing but 31468. So let me just enter there into the bash prompt again of the pod. So I'm going to curl one of the node IPs and I'm going to use colon followed by the port number, which is 31468. It says it works. So which means that it was able to get into the application. And the reason why I had to get into the pod to access the node is because all the ports and the worker nodes will have interconnectivity. So that is why I had to get into one of the pods to access the node. I mean, to access the node IP and the node port. We can also try to access the same stuff using the public IP of the node followed by the node port. So in this case, the public IP, one of the public IPs can be copied and let's try to curl it from any of the node. It doesn't matter if we do it from inside the pod or outside the pod or outside the node. So let's try to curl it and let's try to put the port number follow, uh, after the colon, 31468. So this time, I don't think we are getting anything. This is because all the external communication will be, will be uh, controlled with the help of a firewall rule in Google Cloud. And since we are using Google Cloud, we need to ensure that we, need, we have to add a firewall rule which would allow the node ports. So I can create a firewall rule in Google Cloud using this command gcloud compute. FW rule is nothing but the name. And I can give it something like NP for, uh, for node port followed by cube train just to have some naming uh, standard. And then I would say, hello, TCP, TCP 30,000 to 32767. Let me see if it gets created. Yeah, I have to give create. So compute firewall rules and then create. So firewall rule NP cube train is nothing but the name of the firewall rule in Google Cloud. And here we have not given any subnet because we have been using the default subnet for the current zone or region in Google Cloud. So I have not specified any networking subnets here. Now let's try to curl the IP again, the external IP again. It works. So this means that for accessing the node port using its internal IP, we could log into one of the available pods or we could log into one of the nodes. In this case, we have used one of the pods to log into that and then we try to call the node IP followed by the node port. But in order for us to call the external IP, we need to, have, we need to ensure that we have a firewall rule that would actually allow access to the node port range since the node port is going to change often it is wise to have uh, to allow the firewall i mean to get the firewall rule allow the complete traffic to the, the to the complete range of the node ports so that's it this was about node port and i hope this video was helpful and we thank you for watching this video